The 6.5 is on the road here in Chicago at Microsoft Ignite 2024. Unsurprisingly, it has been all about AI, enterprise AI. And the unique thing about Microsoft is that literally wherever you want to start, uh, novice uh, to expert, uh, wherever you are on the technology uh, range, whether you're a, a developer, uh, an IT professional, uh, anybody in the mix, an executive, uh, an end user, uh, Microsoft sounds like has something uh, for you. Now, we like to do drill downs here at the 6.5, and what we're going to talk about now is born in the cloud, cloud native. And that can be large companies, large cloud companies, SaaS companies. It can also be uh, startups, and Microsoft has a lot going in there, and they have a lot of partners. So it is my pleasure to introduce Annie, Ross, Adriano. Welcome to the 6.5. For having Thanks for having us. Yeah. yeah, it's a great show, and um, like I said, this duality of analyst and and what we like to do is capture uh, what is going on in the industry uh, and just get get this uh, message out here. So super exciting here, born in the cloud. So I'm going to start with you, Annie. Can you talk uh, to me? Uh, first of all, it's really cool that you support startups. There's so many big companies that Microsoft supports out there. Uh, can you talk about the impact? that startups are having on, on the generative AI momentum. I, I don't always ask a question, I think I know the answer, but it's like startups, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks for having us. Yeah, um, yeah generative AI has really uh, taken the startup ecosystem by storm and really ushered in kind of a new wave of startups that I think are fueling a lot of the growth and momentum we're feeling. Uh, you can just look at uh, the funding, VC funding, and how much funding is going in. Uh, I think there was a CB Insights report <sighs> last month that there were 22,000 new uh, uh, AI startups representing a third of venture right. funding in just Q3 of 2024. So just massive scale in terms of um, investment. I think one of the reasons is startups are really uniquely positioned to help enterprise customers with two challenges that they're facing in the era of AI. I think the first is, how do you move quickly, right? You're a large enterprise customer, you've got board demands, you've got Wall, you know, Wall Street demands, customers. How do you move quickly and rapidly implement AI? And I think those who are doing that well are able to leverage partners and license technology from startups to help them rapidly implement AI um, and do so you know, at a pace that will allow them to keep up with what's happening in the market. So I think that's kind of challenge number one and the role startups are playing. And then the second is, how do you then implement it responsibly and securely? Right. So as you're thinking about, all right, I want to partner with startups, how do you make sure that you're doing it responsibly and securely? And so at Microsoft, our, our startups program, we offer up to $150,000 worth of Azure credits, uh, and we help nurture our startups and get them to build on Azure, which is secure and, and compliant and responsible and so they're kind of enterprise grade from the ground up. And then we can kind of match make the startups in our, in our programs with enterprise customers to really fuel yeah. this innovation. So I think that's what we're seeing in terms of the role that startups are playing uh, in the market around Gen AI. Yeah, and it seems like um, investors would feel pretty good if you were behind this, particularly if they had to scale, exactly. and particularly if they needed to get, you know, have enterprise grade exactly right. uh, capabilities yeah. uh, behind them. That's exactly right. So we offer the startups the ability to, we're here with one today, uh, excited to hear from, um, you know, the ability to build on top of our kind of best in class AI infrastructure where we have the security, reliability, performance, and scalability yeah. to support the needs of enterprise. So from day one, our startups are already building uh, on a secure platform. Yeah. So Ross, you, yeah. you deal with larger companies, call, let's call them unicorns, but also a lot bigger than unicorns. I guess unicorn is billion dollar valuation uh, plus. Can you talk to me how they differ, let's see, in their needs, maybe how you approach them versus the uh, startups? Yeah, I think the other thing is, like when we hear the word digital native, there's so many different definitions of what a digital native is. I looked it up before yeah. I came here. <laughs> looked yeah. it up in the green room, okay, so. It, there's an old proverb that says, yeah. if you ask 10 people, you'll get 12 answers, and I think that's probably right. true for digital natives. You know, they, they're different fundamentally from your traditional companies because Traditional companies use software to try to build widgets better, faster, and cheaper, whereas for digital natives, the widget is the software itself. And in particular for the ones that we're talking about here, these unicorns and these sort of late stage digital natives, they're typically very well funded on the VC side of the house. They're almost always founder led or founder engaged. Right. And so this makes them behave fundamentally different, especially in that late stage. They're very technically intense and they make decisions incredibly, incredibly fast. 
So for Microsoft, we approach this in two ways to try to support them better. The first is to have the platform and tools of innovation, those things that allow them to build differentiated solutions that are secure, scalable, and responsible. And then the second is that go-to-market help. How are we helping them reach markets oh, at scale? Oh, interesting. Okay. Co-sell, deal mentoring, deal registration, those types of things. That's interesting. I, 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 I was thinking here, mentoring and sales, it's almost like that's what some full full service VCs do. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's it's in some ways you can kind of see us that way. Like yeah. that's how we differentiate ourselves. But it's really about trying to make those unicorns successful. Yeah. So, Adriana, we, we had pretended that that you weren't here the last <laughs> uh, the last five minutes. Yeah, that's, that's uh, fine. But no, I, I have a few questions uh, for you. First of all, can you tell us for those who don't know what does holistic AI do, and how do you fit in? Are you more over here? On, on the startup or more over here on the unicorn plus? I think I'm in the right position. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in between both and it's a very interesting transition. So first of all, Holistic AI is an AI governance software company. We are uh, actually spun out of university four or five years ago. One of those deep tech companies that are kind of transitioned to become a tech company, as I would say. OpenAI was a deep tech company one day, nowadays it's a proper tech company. So yes. I think we all make that transition one way or another. It was co-founded by me, my other co-founder, Emery. Very different background. I was a computer scientist, he was a philosopher. So it's a very interesting company to tackle this challenge of AI safety, ethics, and so on. In any case, um, the value of this relationship with both sides is that we are really, I'll be honest with you, we're down the middle. We get the relationship with Pegasus and Microsoft to be able to scale and build on the Azure platform. And at the same time, we leverage the go-to marketing at Microsoft, which I'll be honest, I think is the big differential of, of Microsoft, is that go-to-market team that can take you to the accounts, help you break into some of the accounts, and uh, help you kind of grow uh, with them. That's great, I love that. You're getting kind of a twofer. Yes. Right? <laughs> that, that, that's super. So, um, there's a lot of people who would want to help you out there uh, in the marketplace. Uh, why did you choose Microsoft? Yeah, it was. A, it, it, I will be honest. Uh, we we. It was not something that was on our radar because I think of the academic system, like our first in, intuition is to go with the universities and try to find other kind of companies around. Right. And later on, we realized that actually we're building our software into a hyperscaler, <laughs> and AI is, is being built on the hyperscaler. So it was something I would say natural that that relationship had to emerge. And honestly, we have to pick a hyperscaler to be a partner with. And I, I believe in having a focused partner, not trying to be agnostic. F pick one, you know, marry with this partner yeah. for a long time and build this relationship. And we chose Microsoft for the two reasons. One is the, not only the 150K credits, they actually give you more <laughs> if you're part of Pegasus. That's a thing to, to remark for everyone. But the second element, which is, I think, just to make the point again, the go-to-market team in Microsoft is uh, something that is impressive yeah. and is great for us as we scale the company. Yeah, how has the journey been? I mean, it's okay. <laughs> uh, I won't tell anybody. <laughs> it's always been great. No, no, seriously, like, like how has it been? Was, was it what you expected? Was it, did you get more, more than you bargained for here? I, um, I met Brad Smith uh, from Microsoft, uh, actually at Web Summit a week and a half ago. And I told him, the first thing I said to him is that I'm pleasantly surprised <laughs> with the startup ecosystem as well as the go-to-market right. team and, and the technology team. And he said to me, that's our big differentiator. And what I'm experiencing is something that is just um, unbelievable. I, we have a, an account manager that we have speak every week. Every time we need help with some potential customer, they bring us the Microsoft reps. So the engine is working perfectly where the marketplace, where Mac eligible, couldn't be better. And all of that was done in really at pace. So we can get in front of the customer, everyone right. is happy, and we can sell our software and a scale with the support of Microsoft. No, that's great. And what dawns on me that's, that's unique is Microsoft is such a gigantic company and you know they would pay attention yes. to a small company. I mean, let's just be blunt. You know? Yes, I mean, it's, yes. It's, it's it's good. I had the same feeling yeah. in the beginning. I thought we are just so tiny and uh, we never did any transactions or anything. But I think it's the, as Annie was saying, is that 
believing on the SME approach. Right. Believe that we need to get to our customers the new technology, right. because that new technology, like OpenAI was one day, holistic can be the future as we yeah. go along, you know. So uh, as a research firm, right, we talk about accelerants and things that are, are slowing things down. When it comes to, when it comes to enterprise AI, right, there's, there's conversations about data. Like, hey, it was one thing to have, you know, do magic, magical things on ERP data, but now, now it's, it's, it's doing magical things across multiple data sets. Uh, trust and governance are huge too. Uh, and it's not just uh, if, if you're a regulated industry. I mean, sure, it's amplified that, but you can't screw up uh, generative AI uh, if you're any company, because it impacts your customers, it could impact um, your employees, your stakeholders out there. So you're in the governance business here. What kind of uptake and demand are you seeing with enterprises? Yeah, I think we are finally crossing the chasm as uh, using that verbiage from marketing. This year, we've, we've seen so many RFPs yeah. in our space. It never has really happened before. And we do believe that it was because of the, the interest from large companies of adopting at scale. And it's really, it's, as you say, it, it, it's not necessarily only healthcare, financial services, you know, regulated industries. Actually, everyone is trying to make that adoption at scale and they're feeling the pain right. of trying to make that in reality. And the reality is we have to deal with processes, frameworks, regulatory hurdles, internal governance, and so on. How do we make that process seamless as possible? That's why we built Holistic for it. Have you found, just a follow-up question on that, um, have you found the collaboration? M my ass assumption is you would tell your prospects and customers that you're affiliated with Microsoft. Yes. Did you think that helps you, give you credibility in the enterprise? Uh, one million percent. Uh, I would even say there are situations where the customer will only purchase if they're able to purchase through Microsoft Marketplace. And because we tick that box, we yeah. really jump the queue with so many competitors. Yeah, so net-net, they can get the benefits of the innovation from a startup with the benefits of this gigantic company. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is great, this is great. I think I get it, I'm coming to you for money. <laughs> there we go, yeah. There we go, I'm gonna start a startup. It's a we're, better together story. We're gonna be talking <laughs> uh, here. No, this is super. Hey, as part of these videos, the last question uh, that I've been asking people uh, for Ignite uh, is advice you would give, and in this case, to a startup or, or digital native, building a generative AI solution. Annie, let, let's start with you. Sure. My number one piece of advice is to focus on the problem you're trying to solve and not the AI technology itself. AI is a great technology to help you build a solution that will solve a problem, but if you don't deeply understand the problem that your customers are facing uh, and you're just building AI for AI's sake, uh, you're likely not going to be able to build something that's going to be better than any alternative out there on the market. I love so that. I'm a recovering product person. I am a recovering product <laughs> person as like, well. And it's like, I am all in on core value <laughs> exactly. proposition. So Ross, let me, yes. uh, let's get you. What's your yeah. advice for for startups it, here. It's going to sound self-serving, but truly pick the right partner, right? The, you're, you're, you're probably very good at one thing, yeah. maybe two things. Yeah. Make sure that you are partnering with those agencies that can help you fill out the rest of your portfolio. That makes sense. You know, you'd think that would be easy because when you're a smaller company, you know you have to partner, yeah. but sometimes you get these delusions that like you can do everything. Yeah. Um, but then picking the right partner based on what kind of criteria uh, would you recommend that they look at? Yeah, well, I think if you're really strong in the tech side of the house, make sure that you have a partner that's really strong in the GTM side of the house. If you know, you're know you really good on the marketing side of the house, make sure you get a partner that's good on the sales side of the house. It's figuring right. out where you're weak. It's almost like a marriage. You want to make sure that you know your better half is, is filling you yeah. in in some way. Yeah, so Adriano, don't give too good of advice to your competitor. <laughs> but uh, no, we're trying to educate everybody out here. What advice would you give to people like you. Yeah, I think um, you want to say use holistic because we can help you with all the risk problems, but yeah. uh, beyond that, I would say think about the potential impact that this, genera this generative AI application will, will generate, you know, for your customers, for your internal employees, whoever is using it. So try to think about it, is this going to be something that you're going to be using externally, internally, what kind of data it's going to be accessing, um, is this something that's going to be autonomous, there'll be human in the loop, 
Um, what's the worst case scenario if things go wrong? So try to think about all these questions and then answer them. And when you think about like, oh, it's going to be external. If something goes wrong, it's going to be big damage. We use sensitive personal yeah. data. It feels very problematic. And that's something you need to think about what's the guardrails you need to put in place before you go live. Now, I appreciate that. So Annie, Adriano, Ross, thank you so much for, for taking this time. I know I've enjoyed myself, and I know everybody out there is going to pick up on these different, different uh, conversations here and hopefully be better because of it. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. so much. Yeah, sure. thank you. Thanks for thank you. Us. So this is Pat Moorhead in the 6.5 here signing out for Microsoft Ignite 2024 in Chicago. Make sure to check out all of the interviews and analysis that we've done here at the show. Take care. Hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.